What's up, guys? It's Melon here. This time, we're bringing you something special. This is something we held off for quite a while now, and we're just deciding to do it now because we just finished all our series or just like tournaments in general, right? So now we can bring you guys our special account review. Uh, people have been asking for this for a while, and there's some units that were always been asked that I can't really show. It's like my Bazaar, right? Something that has speed really is kind of important because if you know its speed, it just kind of changes the game. But just in general, I'm gonna just go through all my, every unit I have, show you why I built certain units this certain way, or just in general why I have this unit built, right? Okay, let's start it. We're gonna go through and sort by CP. Normally, I like to sort by CP just in general, just how I look at my units, because I kind of have a feeling what their CP are, and I like to look at compact view. Okay, so my RB is just a regular RB, nothing special. It's a B imprint. But it's, it's a decent RB, I think, but it's no way one of the best RBs out there, right? 240 speed, 3890 attack, and 306 crit damage, right? Uh, don't have Max Alexa. I'm working on it. Here's her is it gear. Just in general, full DPS stat lines, right? Most people run him this way, just full damage, just speed. Because you don't really need the bulk on him as long as he does his damage, right? Nothing, in, nothing too insane, but overall, just good pieces, right? I don't have a media on him. I don't have the uh, efficiency to have immunity on this uh, DPS units like this. Yeah, 78 rating 2. Uh, I don't really have good DPS gear in general. Because I'm more of a tank player, right? It's in general, I focus all my coverages on tank pieces. I rarely find DPS gear. Okay. Yo, yeah, for anything else, the uh, reason why I flat I gem in my flat attack on these stones or for my these gears, because he doesn't really benefit from anything else, right? Effectiveness is okay. HP defense is okay. But at the end of the day, you just want more damage, right? So you squeeze in any bit of damage as possible by having all these flat attack everywhere. It just boosts his damage by a bit more, right? Just by a tiny bit more. Okay, so the next unit I have is a Coli. So a Coli is a unit I rarely picked. I think I picked her two to four times throughout the whole season. But the reason why I'll pick a Coli is that sometimes I need a tank buster, right? They'll run a team well, I need AoEs and they're just, I need extra damage, right? Let's say they run Dark Corvus or something. I'm like, okay. So you're playing that game, you're trying to stall me out and just win the long con, right? So I'll bring in more damage threats by bringing like a Coli, a Rally, a Sene, units that don't have much uh, much ways for them to deal with, right? And then there's two ways I could run her, it's either Portrait for the extra damage or Dust Devil, right? So when I ran Dust Devil, I just found that she never procced it. So I just switched to Portrait just for more consistency, right? I think consistency is sometimes the key to like just winning games. You don't have to rely on RG if you know you can do a certain thing 100% of the time. You just take it, right? That's why I went for consistency. But again, I don't really use her. 269 speed, 3k ish attack, and like 277 crit damage. Not the highest insane of DPS gear, but it's just leftover gear I had, right? I don't really use her. Again, if I wanted to, I'll change like HP to crit damage here for more damage. Just in general, I can min max, right? But I just don't really uh, bother with Akoli. Yeah, so I even have a flat attack ring. It's when you have speed on your flat gear, you just have to do make do with what you have, right? Yeah, so just tank buster. When there's no fast units on their team, no AoEs, I just bring my A into it. Oh, and for the he -E -E, I used the immunity one. But another good one I think that you could use on your A Coli is the one that steals souls. So every time she S1, she steals four souls, right? So just like a kind of a sorry, I hit the mic a bit. Just like a second uh, a town, right? Pretty good for long fights because you just drain their souls and they have no way of running with like a Dark Corvus or like a Ruel or something, right? Yeah, not bad, not bad. Uh, Vivian. Vivian's the one who had geared them all for like the longest time. She just, she just happens to be decent into the meta, right? So because she's decent and I have her uh, mold since the beginning, I also pulled quite a bit of imprints for her. I just built her up, right? My Dingus is only plus 15 though. Dingus or just for the barrier. And the E I use is the combat radius one. So when you use the S3, she gets 50% combat radius. This is nice to help uh, further increase the cleave potential, right? Okay, the gear is just mediocre. Nothing insane, right? This one flat rolled here, 5% gem. Yeah, this it's like it could be better if I try to min max more. But this is just gear that I just didn't have on anyone, so I just slapped it on Vivian, right? Damn, a lot of low rolls on these modifications. Maybe I can prove it for sure. Her defense is quite low. Speed is not the highest. Attack is quite low. Like I could, I could boost this Vivian a bit more, right? But she does what she needs to do, right? Immunity and just try to punish Aton users. But I rarely use her, right? 
Okay, we're gonna skip some of these units because we don't really ever draft them. But here's our OP6. I'm pretty sure we changed your OP6 builds a couple of times. She's only plus four too. I don't really use her ever unless I'm messing around and just having fun with chat. So we bring her into like a kind of like an awkward cleave. But here is uh, her build. I bring her on guiding light. Just make sure that she gets a turn. When she gets a turn, she was, uh, the attack will be quite nice. Just in general, the S2 is huge too, right? Yeah, the gears are just full DPS gear, right? Yeah, nothing too insane. Just that line is kind of like uh, just for full damage, right? Because she's not going to survive any uh, uh, long cons, any long fights. She's just there to do a lot of damage, right? It just looks pretty nice. Yeah, you can see how much uh, modification gems I use. I could t uh, you could tell that I farm a lot of like uh, expeditions because there's just almost a modification on every piece. Even for a unit that I don't use, like cigarette, right? So my theory on cigarette is that you either build her super fast or a two ten speed, right? Where she get boosts up and gets uh, to do her attack. You don't really want her in an awkward speed, like mid speed, because she doesn't really do enough damage, and she's not too fast enough, right? So you kind of want her either one or the other. You don't really want to do both because you don't, you're kind of losing out on both ways, right? Okay, my next unit that I'm quite proud of, and okay, maybe not proud, but I think I have quite some of my best gears on, and the unit that I actually ban the most is Landy. I ban her every game almost, and it's just in season three I ban her every game. Yet she's one of my best geared units, I think. Maybe not best geared, but like just highest like value maybe or like min max and gear score wise. So I have her just be imprinted. I recently just put plus fifteen order. Sorry guys, sorry about that. And I just have her in crit chance neck, right? So any unit with a crit chance neck is just extremely higher gear, uh, gear score, right? Yeah, I'm pretty sure if you guys watched the gear score video, you would know what I mean by higher gear score. Everything on her uh, stat line is just higher value, right? This helmet's insane. Chest piece is okay. Necklace is good. Ring is decent. The boot is what kind of holding her back, but I can't really find a better DPS boot. Sorry guys, every time I start streaming or start talking, like casting, my nose starts running. I'm so sorry about that. Anyways guys, I run her super to just like, this is what people will have like on a, a, a speed on like, say, certain lines would be the same as this, but just like less bulkier, right? I don't know how I managed to like, get so much like, defensive stats in this, right? So I just somehow managed to min-max like, just bruise her stats into a DPS 92, right? And it just feels good using, right? She does damage while not, also like, not really like, Let's say dying too fast, right? If she gets, if she doesn't practice guiding light, it's not the worst case scenario. Okay. Anyways, ninety. Not much to say about ninety. Everyone has around the same build. It's just how much more like defensive stats you have, right? And I think I'm somewhere on the higher end of defensive stats. Well, okay, okay. Also, my next unit, probably one of my better builds too. Maybe not the best built unit. Maybe some people have better units, like let's say iconic, or maybe even like uh, let's say uh, eight the ball or someone, right? My aesthetic. I think my S10A is decently built, not insane, nothing too crazy, the damage is low because I don't have imprints as again, imprints are quite hard for me to get, but my S10A is tankier than the average S10A I think, it's a bit slower, but the defensive stats are what you kind of want, want for right, especially for a type of player like me, the issue that I used to run with S10A is that she just dies too quick right, so on this stat line she's a bit tankier, she could take a few more hits, it's not like the lifesteal S10A where she can heal back up, because sometimes you'd still die even on lifesteal, right? Before you even get to heal it back up. So I still like the speed one a bit, the way I play her. But at the same time, I don't, I don't really get the chance to play her too much anymore. But yeah, I just uh even now you can see that the gear can get better, right? My stat is nowhere near the best. Um, let me just say that my stat is just good. I think compared to like other legend players, I may be on an average stat line now. I used to consider myself like on the lower end of the gear line. But now after a bit more farming this uh, last couple of months, I think I kind of could say um, average stat line for a legend player now. So if you want to kind of like a understanding of where like the scale spectrum is to how good my gear is compared to other people, let's say I'm near, I was below average. Now this is what you can see of like a normal legend player. Maybe I can't confirm this. Maybe I'm just, maybe other people got to deny it. But this is what my opinion, right? Okay, stop it. Stop it, stop it, stop it guys, stop it, oh no, alright guys, okay, next unit, rally, okay, 
So Rad's a unit that I really like just carried, right? Carried me throughout the season. The unit that I it was one like my own DPS, right? So Rad is the one that whenever I had an issue or really didn't know what to pick, he's my go to. He's the one who really I bet all all my like all my money on, right? I lose I lose a Rad, I win with Rad. I can't blame him if he doesn't dodge. I can't if I if he does dodge, good for me, right? So the way I built my rod is tankier than usual, just so that I can make sure that he pulls off the one before solo, right? There may be cases where he gets hit in turn one or turn two, but he's still quite bulky enough that where he still can manage to survive and live, right? He'll life steal it back up. <laughs> he'll life steal it. Hope potentially he'll life steal it back up and just recover and win the game, right? So the things that I can prove is the ring. Actually, I don't know. It's quite hard. I kind of prioritize a lot of like defensive stats on this. It's kind of hard to get a bit better of a rabbit, right? Because the Abyss gear are high rolled. The, Abyss, the new Abyss 88 gear is kind of good. Especially for units like Rabbit. If you could balance out the crit damage somehow. That's where I got this new sword, right? To help with the crit damage. Yeah, I think it's an okay route. Tankier than average is a bit weaker than the most, I think. Uh, Acid. So Acid is someone that you potentially just draft for the first turn. Acid is just to help uh, S3 the, uh, the mages, right? Because people, are, everyone's on like guiding light now. You can't really hit the uh, say Athletica or Ceres anymore. But now you just use them to hit like Emma Lulicas, like maybe Alos, C Doms. Just a drill, just a pocket pick, right? Before I previously had them on like 305 ish speed. But now I think 303 or something. But I lowered them. I gave his gear to like other units, just other priority units. And I just uh, made sure that like, he's, yeah, guys, he's not 400 speed. I'm sorry. I lied. I'm so sorry I lied, guys. He was not 300, 400 speed. <laughs> So, really, anything that speed I just put on him, right? I couldn't really min max. Flat attack, as you can see, a hit set, crit damage necklace, flat attack ring. Just in general, I could make this a bit better, but it's just, that's not worth the effort. For how much I use them, it's not really worth it, right? Okay, that's what I said. 297 speed, note it down, jot it down. <laughs> so sorry, guys. Next unit I'll use is Marissa. Marcel is more of a filler unit. I rarely ever use it when it's a serious game. But as a late in this preseason, I've been seeing that I could definitely draft uh, Marcel a bit more into people that I could punish people that, well, the new Troublemaker Crozet, right? Crozet can really make it so that you can really protect one unit. I mean, Marcel was quite fragile because she's a three star. But with Cro Troublemaker Crozet, it's a bit safer to pick her. Especially into like cleaves that are just squishy, right? People are just trying to full out YOLO you. So it was a game that we just played previously where they had a Kisi, RB, Cerise, and one more. I don't I got the last one, but they're all squishy, right? Either way, whoever I hit, Mercer was gonna kill, right? So just in general, if Mercer gets a turn and if she gets some protection, she just could really pop off now. But super hard to pick, right? Very super hard to pick. Life Steel Gear. I've been trying to balance out more defensive stats over right now. She's a bit slow, definitely a bit slow, and the attack is a bit on the lower end. But she does her job if she manages to survive, and that's what she's trying to do. Well, that's what I do with her, right? Get the turn one off. And I don't actually, I, in fact, I don't use Cerise. Sorry, Cerise, Celine. I have Celine geared with free gear, but I actually don't ever use her. I don't think Celine's a viable enough option because people can just play around how Celine works, right? Celine's like, oh, if you use a skill that does not, uh, a, pa a skill that does not attack, right? So it's just, uh, it's very easy to just like work around it. You can soul burn up, like or soul burn your ALOS instead of to boost your seed on. In general, there's a lot of ways you don't need to like just just boost with your ALOS or in general, right? So I don't think Celine's a reliable unit. I'd rather just pick a safer unit you know, like General Perkis where they're just forced to answer that, like they're forced to respond to that. But, like, this is just RNG, right? I don't really like picking with this. Not really RNG, but the enemy can play around your uh, game, let's say that. And it's just not how I want to play it. Cerise, I don't even use Cerise either. I think Cerise is uh, unpopular opinion, but I think Cerise is really bad. I don't think Cerise is really good in RT. It's really easy just to ignore her, let's say. She doesn't really do much besides her dual attacks or like her S2 stun. I don't even think her S3 is a big factor at all. And the only reason you'll really use Cerise is your, if you try to do the Cerise A Tower and Cheese, right? So what people do would be like a super fast Cerise and like a 250, 260 A Tower, right? So Suri strips everybody and A Talon stuns everyone after it. I think that's just a cheese and this is not a reliable way to play. It's just 
not really that important anymore, right? After the F10A Cerise combo died off, I don't think it's too impactful anymore. Cerise could, uh, I could very well not even cure her. Just, she's just for expedition. The next unit I really use for RTA is someone I've been using quite a bit after, actually, Fire Abby. Fire Abby, I've been really liking her as of late, especially after just giving her a bit better gear. I've been improving her gear slightly, and she's just with this new RTA build with the high HP build, just to survive to a frenzy, it feels really good, in my opinion. I recently gave her more artifact slots, like our secret upgrade. She's no imprint, there's no imprint, so it's kind of what I need for my fire right now. It's just a slight boost in defense. If I have like 1500 defense, it would be insane, right? So if I have 1500 defense without an imprint, and just in general, some of my gear is slow rolled a bit, right? This rolled, I rolled a 5% on this, but I recently upgraded to 6. <laughs> Yeah, just in general, like if I could get a bit better gear or a bit more defense, I think my fire rabbit will be set. I like it though, I like it. A bit slow, but not the worst, right? I, I use it for whatever, there's just not enough damage on their side, right? It's a rare pick, but really works well. Okay, the next unit, oh sorry. For fire rabbit, I use the cleanse uh, S1E. Every time she attacks over S1, she has a 40% chance to dispel. This is the E I used in her. Let me see if I made sure I didn't forget anyone else's E. Oh, that's not it. Okay, so the next unit I use is Alentia. So I use Alentia in a bit different way compared to how Season 2 players did it. So Season 2 players, the shuffle way was like the 220 speed Alentia, high crit damage, uh, low defense, just high HP, right? So that's just to do a lot of damage to your S3, right? Because I stated this before, the way you, the reason why you build Alentia like that in Season 2, because everybody ignores your Alentia, right? So you need to do as much damage as possible to try to like push in more threats, right? Because Alencia was just sitting there and she doesn't do much. If she S3s and does a lot of damage, and if she gets a chance to S1 and cripple, let's say defense break with Soulburn, she could do a lot, right? But if you get if she gets a Nord, you don't really need defensive stats, right? That's why a lot of people ran her like 1200 defense, 20k HP, just higher crit damage, right? Just do extra damage. That's why I said portrait was the best on Alencia. Now I say a symbol uni is the best. Just in general, Simo Uni is a better portrait, right? Because Alencia is an RBG unit, she has a chance to miss on fire units. This just helps it out a bit more. So you're still doing the extra damage. But the reason why I dropped my crit damage and dropped my speed a bit for defensive stats is because nowadays teams are running more cleave comms, right? more AoE. So like GP, RB, just a la crowd, right? So you're not really ignored anymore, right? You're actually taking a lot of AoE damage. So you need some bulk. So my theory for Alencia was to draft her into Landy. So when they Landy go, she buffs everyone, pushes all her team up, but Lancia goes after it. So Lancia will strip everyone, push Landy out of stealth, and just in general make it so that you can target whoever you want after it. That was my theory on picking a Lancia and building her like this. But it became an issue where they would strip me and then G Perry would stun me, right? So it just became super hard to use a Lancia, and a Lancia was just haven't been shown or like, haven't been really used in a long time. Downgrade her a bit and now she's squished your number 4, less crit damage as well. Just in general, quite hard to use Alencia. No imprint either. Okay, the next unit I use is A-Ravi. Well, I don't really use A-Ravi, let's say. But I have A-Ravi geared. I geared her just in case I needed to use her for the- like, I had her geared the whole time, right? But I kind of like geared her even more, let's say. I, I let's say upgrade her a bit. Optimize a little more and see if I could get a better Air Ravi. I think this Air Ravi is okay. Ideally, I want her on counter. Super fast speed. Just in general, I want her on counter. Same stat line as this, but let's say like 10 or 20 speed less, right? Super hard to do, but I just don't have the counter gear for it, right? Crimson Seed because I don't run her ER. It's up to, I don't have her uh, immunity either. Crimson Seed just for the just the cleanse, right? So I'll draft Air Ravi into his comps like. Double like double golden boys when they run like LR Crow a Tywin, just a general teams that just have a lot of light units, right? That's why I did a lot in season two. But because LKC got a recent buff, it just became harder to pick a Ravi, right? So a Ravi just came benched and rarely picked. But when there's times where you get last pick and they have the same cop from season two, just like a lot of light units, a Ravi could be picked again, right? It's just the reason the way I like to play RT is just to have everything built, right? Because you never know when you need to use that unit. And sometimes, using that unit might win you the game, right? If there's any chance of me just winning more games with just because I have one more unit built, or I got a counter pick again, I'll do it, right? 
it's kind of why I like to have all my units geared because I never know when or why I need to use a counter for a certain counter, right? So whenever I need to use a certain unit for a certain counter. So I just like to have units built for every reason. Okay, so this is one of my specialties that I, I've been really doing and it seems to be gaining a little attraction to. I really love picking SSB, but my SSB is a bit weird. The season 2 SSB I made was an extremely tanky SSB. I want tanky enough to survive cleave. By surviving cleave, I don't mean like other crowd RB type of stuff, but I mean like surviving cleave as in. Okay, guys, okay, dude. Surviving cleave as in tanking C Dom hits, tanking S10 A, Soul Burns, S3, is tanking Emma Luluka. So I want my SSB super tanky where there's nothing that can kill her turn 1, and they'll waste her so much attacks on her that she will eventually. Just make them get punished, right? They they get punished by using all their skills on SSB and not killing her. So now the rest of my team is still alive, and my SSB alive. So in general, I want my SSB super tanky just to like be a threat that can't be killed. Let's say. However, SSB, I pulled a lot of copies so that I could uh, max my drink. Got the drinks maxed. Uh, yes, very weird gear. Gear that you will never ever like really use on anyone, besides SSB. So I had her 3,500 attack, 1,600 defense, and 20k HP. 100 crit. I don't really care about crit damage. That was just extra, right? Yeah, just insane. I think this is, I don't know. When I looked at my guildmate stat lines of SSB, I thought that after seeing this, I was like, wait, maybe my gear is not that bad. Like after uh, looking at my SSB comparing to like my guildies, I really thought maybe I'm not as bad as I thought, right? So yeah, my SSB is right there. The next unit I use in RT is F Maya. F Maya is something that has a long story of me, right? I think this is something that I started like enforcing in season two, and it just became somewhat of a trend, right? So this thing started becoming more, well, it was a little popular near the end of season two, but I began using her a lot in season three at the beginning, right? And I kind of baited a lot of people into using F Maya, baiting as in she's still good, right? She's still viable. But I made everybody plus 15 their F mile, and I was just kind of like, uh, oh no. Melo made me F plus 15 my F mile, but now I don't use my F mile anymore. It's like, I kind of like something like that, right? So I kind of baited everyone into that scenario. Where, oh no, Melo makes me, made me waste my molos. Hey man, I think F mile is still usable. I think if I get a chance to uh, use her properly in the next coming like, few days, I'll definitely make a video about her. Sorry guys, I did make a showcase video too recently. And it wasn't a showcase, it was more of a rough breakdown. My bad, I apologize for that. I'll do proper showcases in the future. I'm so sorry, I was just I just couldn't edit the thumbnail in time. I'm so sorry guys. I'll definitely do better showcases. Yeah, once again, F my stats. Defense. So the reason why I run her in speed is that because on counter, she never gets a turn, right? Uh, F my is just not there just for the counter, right? You need her for the S3. The S3 is what really changes like actually I think it's the main reason why I use my F Maya for the S3. Because the S3 potentially just kills the RB one shot, right? I usually only bring F Maya to like RBs, like really squishy RBs. And S Maya's F3 will always one shot, right? So it's just if you don't get a turn, it means you won't get to one shot. It's kinda why I bring my F Maya and you kinda really need the speed. Faster would be nicer, but it's just really hard to push the same damage that line with a bit faster stat. Okay, that's my F Maya. Next one, ooh, something I might be known for for a lot. Something that was really toxic in the community and people just always hated. People used to ban this a lot when they play against me. They still do ban this a lot. So my E-Tawin. So my E-Tawin is... It's kinda... He's been to several builds, right? He was on the high effect build, he was on the high crit damage build, he was on the high, extremely tanky build. Like I had him at, let's say, 2200 defense, 26k HP at once, I think. And now he's just on a mix of bruiser's, bruiser's defense. So a lot of people mentioned how is 185 speed enough. I never found an issue with 185 speed. I personally could make him faster, but I never really ran into the issue of him being slow enough. Well, being ever too slow. So I think it's fine enough. I never really need the extra speed or it never really seemed that was impactful enough. But it is a bit on the slower side. Only be imprint. I think I used my only 8 Tywin to uh, imprint this guy. Cause I was trying to really boost for extra, any extra stat possible. I use my slates, I use all my inslates, and I use my imprints, sorry, my duel, my only copies just to improve my, just like the slightest chance, right? Because guys, 
Look at this. Let's say twenty three k two eight eight, right? How much do how much goes away from six percent? Twenty twenty two eight seven seven. So about like four hundred HP gets increased. Eight seven seven. Yeah, so you get about four hundred HP for every six percent. That's quite insane. Like I'll take that, man. It's quite huge in the higher levels, right? Because every that every like tiny bit matters in higher up. It's kind of why I think it kind of sucks when I don't have the imprints, the, the artifacts max out and everything. It just really hurts, right? Min maxing everything really sucks at the end of the day. Sorry, I didn't show the stat lines. Yeah, it's just bruiser gear. Really heavy bruiser gear. So to reach these type of stat lines is the crit chance, right, guys? This is what carrying me. I say this so many times. I said this in the gear score and the whole crafting, uh, made Koli crafting event thing. To really get the highest value or highest gear score, you need the crit chance necklace. And you can see like the units that I'm really proud of, Landy, S10, A Talent. What, what what's in common with them? They're all on immunity, yes, and they all have that crit chance necklaces. So not really like they're getting high stats even on immunity. Oh yeah, SSB too, but SSB is quite weird. <laughs> I don't know what's really wrong with SSB. But yeah, at the end of the day, crit chance necklaces is what makes my units really like up on the next level. Right? I think that's why I say my gear is a bit better than before. Because previously, I said my gear was a bit below average. Reason for that was I never really had any crit chance necklaces back then. But now that I'm really having like a couple or several crit chance necklaces spread around, I feel I feel a lot better. I feel a bit more comfortable, right? But yeah, that's my time. So Lilith here. Lilith is someone I've been messing around for a lot. It's just I really like playing Lilith in every season. I had a different build for Lilith every season, actually. Just in general, I think she's still viable and still good, right? It's just super hard to build her. She needs to be plus 15 in my opinion and just very hard to generate. And then it's just, you really want to mix match everything. I like the, right now, the current season, uh, season 3 right now, I'm not too sure about season 4. But season 3, I like her on a more of a bruiser stat line. So a bruiser is not high crit damage, but high crit chance, right? She plays like a bruiser FCC with high crit chance. So the reason is, you need her tanky, right? The way I play, you need them tanky. There's no reason for them to be squishy because they'll get focused and they'll die. I'm running Monarch on her because she's a high HP pool and she's kind of fast, right? So she's kind of playing like a Wrath substitute. It's kind of rare to draft, not too rare, but it is hard to draft both your Wrath and Lilith at the same time. So the reason why I bring her on Monarch is just sometimes the Monarch is a really nice artifact, right? Plus 10% defense and a barrier at the end of your turn. So it's just super good in general, right? So this really makes up for the low defense I have and just makes her harder to kill. While she also does dish, uh, deal a lot of damage for her S1 and also dual attacks for S1, right? So just in general, I think. Lilith hurts a lot. People are just underestimating her. I think the ER Lilith's belt was in general very bad. It worked once, but it'll never ever work again. The Lilith's belt, ER belt was just, I hated it, guys. It doesn't counter Basar. Yes, you don't get pushed back, but at the end of the day, it doesn't do anything else, right? Because your team gets pushed back. Like, after you S3, your Lilith is pointless, right? I think the ER Lilith could def was definitely not the play. When people suggested this, I was like, this is not the play, guys, because you can still get hit by F10As. F10As out there with 200 plus effectiveness, your 250 ER Lewis will still get hit. Yeah, I don't, I just in general, guys, I didn't like it. And I still stand by my point of view. It may work once or twice, but the ER Lewis will definitely just be pointless or useless later. Okay, something that was very good, but I hated using later. Caesar Auto. I hated using this guy. It's not because he's on counter, guys. Counter was perfect. I, I totally like him on counter. But the fact that he still dies no matter what. Because the way the new cleave works with F Tenebria, he can still get the fence broken and he doesn't slap that back. If he gets the fence broken and their RB goals, you're dead. Like Caesar Auto is just so hard to just make work. Even if you're into like a full debuff team, you still somehow still lose. Like, I think a lot of people can relate with this. It just, Caesar Auto has really fallen off. It's just, it's not even that the nerf, that, um, the nerf what they did to him was, his S2 was that you counter any debuffs that gets inflicted, right? And it ignores ER, right? But now they made it where it goes for an ER check. So that's what the nerf on Caesar Auto was. Even with this, like, nerf, I, I mean, it, I don't think the nerf mattered too much. It's just in general, it's been super hard to use Caesar Auto. So the reason for me using him on counter is that, Sometimes they don't have debuffs on every unit, right? And they could just S1 you to death, right? So this counter will help you keep Just keep them in check, right? Make sure that you're threatening them and like you don't really 
let's say die to anything around them right? or die to just getting cheesed by S1. So Caesar is always, always scared to be attacked. And let's say there's a dizzy, right, or like some unit of AoE. If they constantly AoE you, there's a high chance you just counter even if they didn't debuff you, right? So this might be good into like the new Salteria, but I don't think Salteria is too played too often right now. You can really see in the future how like people um people don't really fear Caesar all anymore either, right? Okay, so my next unit I don't really use too often, but I just haven't I just I just have her built right. Okay, okay, one last thing. I have him on counter again. Yeah, counter because he deals extra threat, right? But I don't really think life steals to play because you don't really care about life steal, right? You already life steal enough for S1. You're not really trying to like. You're not relying on the life steal to carry you, right? You need to rely on the damage. This is what I've been finding a kind of a big issue lately. People have him tanky, but he doesn't do enough damage, right? So then you need extra damage to really like. Just in general, you need to pull out more damage for your Zero to do any work. He just gets ignored too easily in the end. Okay. So the next unit I have built, but I don't really use too often, is uh, Momo. People are gonna look at this and say, "What the heck is this?" Right? So um, I have two types of Soul Weavers built. I have Soul Weavers with 250 ER to resist everything, and I have Soul Weavers 150 ER to resist the lower effectiveness units. Lower effectiveness units like uh, units like Mycerea or A Tower units that don't really have high effectiveness, but still have some right. So they have, I have Momo built on the case where I can resist Mycerea. Resist a Tywin, resist like just units, not units that really target everything. Like maybe Lassar has some low ER or something, right? So low effectiveness. I could probably resist that, but I'm not gonna resist the F10, right? I'm not gonna bring Momo into F10. So Momo is just a bit slow, but super chunky, just for like bruiser fights, right? So I have almost every silver built, and they're built for several occasions, right? Momo is the one for it. Oh, maybe they bring a Bysteria, or maybe they bring one unit who has like a DPS, like Falcon Curry or something, right? Yes, just to cleanse one thing, but not everything. Okay, so one of um something I've been known for recently, something I've been favored, love, talked about all the time, something I've been memed at for, just in general. The one, the only, the Carl himself. So. <sighs> this guy has caused me so much trouble, man. Let me switch him to uh concentration. This guy has caused me so much trouble, left and right. Does me so much good at the same time, just sometimes it just doesn't work. But yeah, one of my units that I rely on a lot, one of my favorite units in general, Blue Crow. Plus 15, man. You have to plus 15, you guys. There's some people who doesn't even plus the, uh, model the S3. And there's people who don't get the actual combat release on the S2, right? And then there's no pe people who don't get the provoke chance. It's just you need every model, man. And Carl does a lot of damage. People underestimate how much damage he actually does with his S1 and S2. So I really think he deserves the plus 15. Such a solid unit, man. So 1650 defense, 29k HP, 194 speed, 96 ER, right? I don't have him on insanely high ER, I just have him enough ER so that he could probably resist turn 1, turn 2. Let's say they try to provoke him turn 2, I'm fine with that. And then uh, it's because a lot of damage comes from like the AoE from turn 1, right? Let's say GP. Elder Crow, RB, Landy, that does a lot of AoE damage, right? So if you can resist anything for the first turn or two, and you can horse turn two, that's all you need, right? That's how you kind of really run the crowd lately. Insane necklace, man. I can't get anything better. No way I get anything better. Like, I have to just like roll the defense to get a higher roll. But it's really hard for me to just like, it's B imprint, right? There's no, really hard for me to really get any higher stats. So I'm missing, what, 12% here? 800 HP? Almost 30k if I get imprisoned. Just in general, it's super hard for me to really min max this gear anymore. I have to really high roll, right? In general, my gear ain't the most insane, right? It's just really well average gear, nothing too high of gear scores. Yeah. So, something that I also really use and people are just. Um, underrating, but I guess you can really say it's not really underrating when she's kind of bad lately. It's just dizzy. I I ran dizzy in a special way. I never ran her like anyone else. People usually go with the counter dizzy. Season two, I'm not sure if anyone's seen my previous account reviews on like I think Gabe has um, X Sky King has my account review on his stream or his channel. But I used to run a double hit set immunity dizzy. I never really followed the counter dizzy set. Half the reason was because I didn't farm uh, Banshee, and half the reason was I played her in a different style. 
previous season had her like 180 of effectiveness and the same stat line, right? Basically almost same stat line, maybe a bit squishier. But it's just to constantly strip the DNs, Ruelas, Corrales, right? You, can, you don't really need counter as long as you strip all their buffs with their violin, it's amazing, right? So Dizzy applies the same way still, right? If you can, as long as you strip the buffs, survive. Survive long enough, continue to strip the debuffs. I think it's fine, right? Super hard to use Dizzy now, though. Especially with how LR Crow is in the meta. LR Crow really, really, really hurts Dizzy in a way. Because Dizzy is constantly S1 and LR Crow will constantly get his cooldown in S3. This is very hard to draft her in general. The, the, the meta is also too aggressive. Because the meta is too aggressive, it's kind of hard to really uh, force Dizzy in, right? Because Dizzy is the one who plays for the longer con. Okay. So here's my, um, okay guys, my cat dog is coming up. The cat dog is someone that's like super special later in the, uh, oh, sorry, later in like, let's say, the season. Came out near the end, and then you just had to build him, right? The cat dog himself, General Purgus. So I don't have a max Draco. My Draco's plus 15. I don't really have the artifacts for this. Draco. And then I have the increased combat readiness by 3%, by extra 3% on the S2 for his exclusive equipment. And then my reasoning for, uh, sorry, my reasoning for General Purgus is just to have him geared just to be the first turn unit, right? I have him faster than my DPS so that he can attack buff all my DPS, right? The only one he's slower than is like my RB, but that's a special, a special case, right? I don't really draft that much. I draft my GP General Purgus for more for like a counter cleave or like anti aggro. So there's way, two ways to use your general Perkins, right? Use him in an aggro comp and use him in an anti-aggro comp. That's why he was so good because he'd be used in every scenario. And for me, I use it for the, the anti-aggro one, right? Yeah, nothing too special, just a lot of decent speed on his gear. Just to help him get turn one, right? Yeah. GP was a unit that rose out of nowhere. Super good in general. Even now, he's still good, right? It's hard to even... uh. It's hard, really hard to stop him still. Okay, next unit I'll be using a lot is Doris. So my Doris did get a bit of a nerf. Um, she was a bit faster and I had more defense, but I think my Doris is still same reason, right? I don't. There's units that you use for anti CC, so like units that you use into debuff teams, and there's units that you use into like lower CC teams, and there's units that you don't use to the debuff teams at all. Units that are just for just to heal up. So you never draft Doris really into a lot of debuff teams. You only draft her into teams that have a lot of damage but no debuffs, right? So example would be like a RB, GP, LR crowd team. You take a lot of damage but you don't really get controlled, right? So that's where her S2 is insanely strong. That's why you don't really have a same amount of ER in her, right? I felt that 100% ER was comfortable on units that just needed to survive from like that. The units that just had like provoked or something, right? Not a lot of CC but just, just had some, right? Can that procs water? Yeah, so that's the thing, right? LR crowd would do like 4 or 5k to her, RB would do like 3 or 4k. A lot of units will just do slightly a lot of damage to your units. So you get cleaves, right? Your doors will get pushed up and just S2, right? S2 heals everyone up, defense buff, uh, heal over time, right? So Doris, special case, but I did pick her a lot, right? She's still a good unit. She heal, she's, it's, her, she heals so much, man. It's just so useful to have her. Not in the most insane gear. As you can see, I have a defense on her. I don't even have her immunity. Basically, like almost my leftover gear, right? and she still does her job. Still does wonders. Not even self imprinting man. Yeah, I'm not gonna even use it because just look at this. Um, seven two hundred HP just for yourself, or four eighty for three other units, right? Just the value between these two is just insanely different. So you're, I'm always gonna do AOE imprint. Okay. So the next unit, a unit that's really been uh rising in the meta, a unit that I'll probably done a uh, breakdown for you I'm definitely sure the breakdown will be released before this uh, Troublemaker Crozet put on Bastion everything you know about my Troublemaker set I have probably explained in the previous uh, breakdown but I'll do a brief uh, TLDR I just want him to be fast enough and tanky enough so my backline can get pushed towards so I, when I need to I'll push a unit up right so when he's 200 speed they'll do like a bunch of AoEs they'll hit a bunch of units right and you get pushed up once you get pushed up, you can cleanse anything that happens. So let's say Basira hits you, right? Basira hits your Rallet, and then you're like, okay. So I got pushed up, I'll just cleanse my Rallet and push my Rallet up. There's no issues with that, right? So no no problems, right? That's why I kind of use my Crozet. I really like him to just support my backline, full-on support. 
you bring him to like I'll bring with my Mercer, my SSB, my Landy, my Raleigh, my S10, just Endro. Anyone I need to protect and keep me carrying the game. It's it's my Crozet's helping that out, right? Bastion, because Bastion is just the shield is huge for units that need stealth. Okay, this is stat line. I run the EE that gives the um when he uses S3 it increases the uh user by the target by 40% CR. That's the EE I run. Yeah, I, not insane stat line, right? I just give him extra crit chance because maybe he'll do some decent work. I'm still on a testing theory with him, testing phase with him. But a really fun unit to use, man. Really fun. Okay. My special unit. Oh my god, specialty. I think this was all I'm known for, guys. Like, if it's my bread and butter. But like, if someone has to target ban me, or just in general, what is Melon known for? Besides like my, <laughs> besides a Taiwan, it has to be my, my Falconer Curry. It has to be my Falconer Curry, guys. Literally, my unit, I draft in every, I can draft any scenario, every game, just, just, oh my god. This, my favorite, maybe my favorite unit, in fact, even. My Falconer Curry is someone I put in, like, it's not immunity, guys, no immunity. It's not the most insane gear, it could be immunity. Wait, let me. It's not even okay. Okay, it's not even self imprinted. There we go. There we go. That has the final stat line. Once I max this artifact, it's gonna be 22k HP. And it's just uh, the only thing I can really change is like immunity. But it's quite impossible for me at this point. I'll show you guys. I'll show you guys. I'll show you guys why I can't really put an immunity. Because this speed helmet, this hit set helmet, is carrying the hell out of me. I can't change this, guys. It's impossible. This is one of those perfect pieces where you can't, not perfect perfect, but like as almost as perfect as you get, right? I'm missing what, 2, 4, 6% here? 2 from effectiveness, 4 from defense. But the perfect I mean is in the speed, right? The speed! 24 speed on a purple piece, like a heroic gear. I can't change it, and this, this is insane too, look, look at this! Oh my god. That's why I can't change the hits it off, if I change the hits it off, I'll be super squishy, right? But I don't really um, mind keeping her on a non immunity because the only thing that really stops uh, or really, really affects my Falcon Curry is like Aces, right? But even then, it doesn't really matter because I'll just heal back up the damage and I'll come back around to S3, right? I don't really rely on S3 turn 1. Most of my games are rely on Falcon Curry for the long con, right? She'll get through the game and eventually she'll heal everything up and just solo, right? GFA solo. If you guys are familiar with Falcon Curry, pretty sure everyone knows what that is. So some artifacts people ran for Falcon Curry used to be Elbrus. Some people run for counter Falcon Curry on Elbrus, but I don't think that's the way. Just different taste, and also at the same time I don't have the bash gear to test it out. So maybe I can't really say if that's the way or not. Right? It's just my opinion. I think this is one of my favorite styles to play with Falcon Curry. GFA speed taggy. People run her either on Elbrus, GFA, or what's Adamant. Not sure if there's anything else. Maybe Monarch. Monarch's not bad, honestly. Monarch. Mark is the same theory, right? You're lapping so fast, you're always refreshing the shield. But you're lapping so fast that you're wasting your turns, right? Because the shield can't be on more than one unit, I think. You can't really... Like, you're wasting, like, turns of it, right? You say, you get, you put the shield on, you lap so fast, you put the shield on again. When they already have the shield, you're not getting, like, any benefits from that, right? GFA is for the Falcon Curry solo, just anti-crit, immunities, defense buff, all the same buffs you get, man. One of my favorite units, and there's... There's just no reason not to build her, man. It's a force banner in a lot of scenarios, and if you really can pocket pick her, a pocket pick her out of nowhere, it can really shift the game, man. Yeah. So, another unit. This is like, if this is like a team rocket, this is Jesse. This is James. Jesse and James. Fog the Curry and Adventure Rass. Units that always pair together, always works wonders together. Uh, again. Not max imprinted, and I'm never gonna, uh, not AoE, uh, concentration, imprint release, sorry, because it's just more beneficial to the AoE one, you get more HP than just putting, uh, concentration for yourself. My Rast is 240k, uh, sorry, this is not the most insane Rast either, I'm pretty sure, uh, if you guys are too, um, familiar, you guys have seen Kenny's Rast, or, like, maybe, like, other people's Rast, right, or maybe, like, Sucks Rast, just in general, my Rast is just average compared to theirs, but, I try to make him bulkier, high HP so that the uh, Monarch could really be beneficial. High HP so that he heals more on S3. Rast is just a really good unit to have, always good in a lot of scenarios. One of the units, not, no reason not to build either. 
is just very good as a support unit. He's like, as I say, like just say James, right? They pair so well together and they help you carry the games of like, they can really solo games off of, especially when they just, like Ras has a dual attack with S2, so burn it, you could just repeat and rinse. Uh, rinse. Founder Kurt S3 is just insanely strong. You get it back so fast. These units are just amazing. Yeah, as you can see, like my gear ain't insane, right? Like there's it's some decent rolls, but it's just average overall. And when they're all averagely well, it makes your units good, right? You don't need insane pieces to really push your units really to the next level. You just need gear that like has synergy. A good one would be this boot, right? Look at this boot it has 30, 28 percent in just percent rolls, right? But the fact that these rolls, the flat rolls, have so much synergy with the main rolls. So like there's a lot of flat defense, a lot of flat HP. Just because they're really well, they work well together, means it's usable, right? This gear is no wall, no way insane, right? There's no way you pick this gear over something else if you had the choice, right? But the fact that it works so well together, it has potential to really just help out your bruisers, your tanks, and stuff like your, yeah, your full on tanks, right? It's in general, you don't need the insane. Okay, TLDR, you don't need the most insane gear. You just need gear that's average or that works. Okay. So here's my clutch unit that I use for uh, debuff teams. It's this thing up. Yes, yes, yes. It's a hit set this thing up. <laughs> so the Steeda was my answer to uh, heavy debuff. People would have their Ray or their uh, ER Lilius or something, but or DJ Basara, right? My answer is this, you know. War of Horn. So this was a special tech that I try to pull out for just the war arena, just in general. Because usually you have Water's Origin on her, right? So when she gets hit, she'll get boosted up. But say she doesn't get hit, right? Let's say they have single targets like S10 a or Emma Luluka, right? If don't don't hit her, how would you get your turn, right? So in this theory, if three turn goes by, War of Horn will push my Destino up automatically, and I could just heal or cleanse dead, right? I think this was just a huge smart move to do, and I was just like, no reason not to do this, right? Water's Origin means they have to hit you. But what if they don't hit you? So you bring Wall War's Horn. I bring the cleanse that dispels one debuff with no ally. The lowest health we're using S1. And just clutch sometimes, right? You're never gonna really get a second S3. Your S2 is such so much of a gamble, right? For the E, so I use the S1 E. Uh there's no special reason for me using the hitset on her. It's just because I have really good ER rolls on the hitset. And they just both have to be hitset, right? So yeah, let's just look at the helmet. It's it's 30%, 38% uh, effect resist, right? 19 defense, 8 HP. It's just very hard to really replace this, right? So this is the reason why I just have this random hits on her. Same thing with the necklace. There's a lot of like supportive uh, support stats. Yeah, there's no special reason for the effect set. And immunity would be nice, but I don't really have the immunity to push her on high ER. Only 240 ER though. I thought I had a bit more. Maybe I changed something recently. This boot, something that I, oh my god, I low roll too, didn't I? Yeah, this boot was some of my, my highest roll gear score gear, but then I had to just get rid of it, right? I was just being inefficient. It's 40% ER, and it had nothing else that helped the scene, right? So I really had to do, just do something to help out her, and make my Destina a bit better, right? At the end of the day, if I get her HP%, I'll put in the HP% for the flat defense instead. But I just needed something, I was trying to put everything in as much, like, I was just trying to make my units as insane as possible, just for the tournament, right? Just for, like, the due date, let's say. And yeah, this is how uh, this is, you know. Okay. Wait, did I show you one? Oh yeah, I showed you everything, right? The ring. Okay, uh... I don't think I'll show my chart. My chart's not ready. I don't think it's ready. So we're gonna skip my chart. A lot of crap. Um, when we started streaming, guys. When we started streaming, uh, what we really was, um... What we really like tried to uh, really push was the Golden Boys. No one really knew what Golden Boys was. Like, we said Golden Boys, you automatically assume what it is, right? Because you kind of know what it is immediately. But no one really knew what, no one really said Golden Boys till we started. Because we got this from, uh, I think, Sui. <laughs> when we played RT a lot, we usually draft the Golden Boys a lot. And Sui will mention, well, oh, you guys are drafting the Golden Boys? I'm like, wow, that's just, that just rolls off the tongue. So we started saying this in our stream, and now I think the Golden Boys are just like officially a thing now. It means just the Elmo Tywin and Elmo Crawl, right? And then I think Golden uh, General Purgus has slowly slipped into the Golden Boy comp. Which is in general, one of my main tanks, one of my specialties back then. 
not insane. Like, it's not insane, right, guys? I don't have like so I'm gonna go back a bit too. My Decino's not imprinted. Like just in general, I don't have a lot of imp imprints, right? Unless it's like uh, Nat fours or Nat threes. But my Nat fives are not really highly insane, right? So these stats are highly achievable if you have imprints as well, right? So yeah, my my just B imprint. Uh, eighteen hundred eighty-five defense. Twenty-five eight hundred twenty-five k eight hundred HP. Two hundred thirty-one speed. Sixty-two ER. I think the speed is quite nice on L L Carl. Because it has the chance to really uh, res uh, resist a lot of random things. Like resist uh, General Perkins S3 or uh, Viserys S3. Having that slight chance to resist is quite nice. And just, I like it better than just having a full on tanky LR crowd, right? I can lose the ER and put it into other stats, but I, I really do like the ER on this. Okay, so let me show you the gear. I run on Adamant. A lot of people like to run on a portrait or like uh, the one that gives you the, the same thing as uh, my Lancey artifact. What was it called? I keep forgetting. This artifact always troubles me. Every time I gotta bring this artifact up, I forget what it's called. Symbol of Unity. Symbol of Unity. Yeah. I don't. Uh, some people run Symbol or Portrait on the other crowd. But personally, I run Adamant, right? Uh, he's my only Adamant user. So it's just nice to have a uh, consistent uh, mitigation, right? If you're running tanks and you're not running any mitigation, it feels weird. <laughs> but honestly, guys, I run a lot of tanks, but there's actually no mitigation. Like. The only units that I recently before I never had FCC right, Fallen Cecilia. So the only units that I had mitigation was Aureus on my blue crowd and added a bit of my other crowd right. But I never drafted blue crowd really, and the only reason I drafted was uh, other crowd. So I was never, I don't really have mitigation on my tanks, but even on my tank player right. I use my tanks more of a different way, for them to just like do a lot of damage. Like there's so much good tank artifacts out there, that you can't really justify which one's better sometimes. Anyways, this is my other crowd. Let me go through the gear for you guys. Immunity fast. I try to make him a bit slower in my FCC because of the whole FCC trick in the past. This low road so bad, man. But yeah, you guys can see how much just modification I have. You see, like, almost every unit has like modification gems on them. When there's a there's a roll that I can roll away, I definitely just have modification gems. Yeah, this low roll too, right? This is like a four to nine percent. There's a four percent here. The boot was like four nine as well, right? Four percent here. I could just definitely get better rolls, but it's so hard to get them, right? Okay. Next unit would be oh man, this is one of the speed units I I did not want to show, right? Fairy Tilting Nebula. One of the units that besides your ACID, besides your Basar, Fairy Tilting Nebula. Yep. So nothing too insane here. Nothing insanely insane. 276 speed, 100 effectiveness. It's not your 200 effectiveness, 280 speed, 290 speed. Uh, fairy tale, right? Yeah. So it's just uh 1586 defense, almost 14k HP, 270, 276 speed, 100 effect, right? Just fairy tale to me for the uh, just for the sake of having her, right? When she it's, she does her job really well, and when she needs to do it, and when you, it's just in general, you, everyone needs her as scenario bow, right? You never know when you need a drafter, and when you can draft her, she could just potentially solo carry the game. Okay, let's go for, uh, Abyssal because just for RNG, right? Some people say Abyssal is not nice because if you stun them, they can't counter. But Abyssal just meaning that you could potentially stun your unit and make them waste a turn. It's still nice, right? Let's go for the gear real quick. Yeah, just, I do any modifications possible just to really push out like as much as I can, right? Modification here, modification there. Just in general, I need every step bonus I can get, right? Even for flats, right? I put in a lot of flats too, because flats are something, right? Flats means that uh, it's just the tiny bit of uh, tankiness you're gonna get, the tiny bit of extra tankiness, right? This, we this weapon is kind of insane. You don't really have anyone to use it on, right? So Fairy Terminal, 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 so the next unit, um, oh man, if Abadar was here, he would, he would love it, man. This unit where I've been hiding for a while. I kind of changed this gear. I made it a bit slower, but here is here is my Basar. Okay, Basar is two sixty seven speed, forty eight effect of this. Yeah, it's only for forty eight things. Yeah, guys, it's nothing special. My Basar was actually scuffed. Plus three, even. 
So, 1500 defense, 1500, sorry, almost 16k HP, 267 speed. It was a bit faster before, but I had to nerf him because I wanted to make my fairy tail team be faster. It was nothing special, guys. Nothing special. My star was not 300 speed at all, guys. Everybody's like, yo, show Basar, show Basar, show Basar. Oh man, I have nothing on my Basar. <laughs> I was just fooling you guys. My Basar is scuffed. <laughs> Alright, so this is it though. No immediate Basar even. Yeah, nothing on him, man. It's just literally a scuffed Basar. He was just there just to throw people off, right? <laughs> oh man. Okay. Even flat HP, right? Just for the speed, right? Just for the speed. Yeah, just for the speed. A lot of just wasted like stats here. Remember, you don't really need to affect us too much on Basar anymore. Because all you do on Basar is just really soul burn S3, right? You soul burn S3, so the effectiveness is just whatever. If you're not soul burning, you're just gambling so much, and I just rather soul burn so that it's not a gamble, right? Okay. Uh, one of the Exodia pieces really, um, someone really con, people con this as part of the Exodia piece. I think she, he really is very strong, but I don't know if you draft them with the other Exodia pieces. But basically, Sage Bow. So, I had Sage Bow on several, actually, yeah, I had Sage Bow on several builds. Slower build, tankier build with higher effectiveness, and now this is the build I kind of running. Just higher speed, right? So higher speed, just in drill, just so that he could cut cleavers, cut roses, cut just athleticals or alos or anything like that. And still a decent enough tanky line, right? I actually changed him. Um, I changed his artifact actually. He was on a portrait, sorry, Proof of Valor. The only reason I took him off Proof of Valor was because I ran, I was fighting Panshu in the tournament, right? I knew if I'm ever going to draft uh, Sage Bao, I don't know, I'm not going to be scared of him uh, cleaving me, right? So I took off Proof of Valor. But ideally, I have him on Proof of Valor. Proof of Valor means that if I ever run into a scenario where a cleaver is going to see Dom my Sage Bow, my Sage Bow will not die. Because uh, C Dom does two turns, right? She does her S2 and then she does her S3, right? Sorry, she does her S3 and then she does her S1. That means two turns and she has to hit the bow or else her team, her team just dies, right? So Sage Bow on Proof, just to mitigate the damage, right? Faster so they could help cut. Uh, the low effect because I'm not really running him into like high ER units. I'm only running him into a brute, like cleaving comps, right? RBs, Bicerias, S10A, uh, Malulicas, like those comps, right? So the effectiveness does not matter at all. Yeah, let's show his gear real quick. Look at that. This, this gear sucks. My gear is not insane, guys. My gear is definitely not insane. That's why I say if you just be smart about your gear, roll for gear that you need, and just like. Use the optimizer. You just look at that. Look at this ring, guys. Can you tell me where the rolls went? <laughs> Can you tell me where my rolls are on this ring? I there's no rolls, bro. <laughs> but yeah, this is like why I say it. you don't need insane gear, guys. You just gotta be smart about how you play and really just optimize, right? So this ring, this necklace is bad. This ring is bad. This boot is perp. Look at this boot. Oh my god. <laughs> there's no way you guys can say your gear. It's worse than some of my gear. Look at this. <laughs> oh my god. The ring is bad, the neck is bad, the shoes. Guys, you guys are good people. You guys you guys you just gotta watch me art play a bit more, right? I'll I'll, I'll share my knowledge with you guys. <laughs> I'm just joking. It's just playstyle, right? I, I have a really unique playstyle. I really um I have experience playing it, so I think it's just I'm more comfortable playing the tag style. Okay. So one of my favorite soul we were picking to do last season too. That's my Rwanda. So, a lot of people have their uh, free to play Rwanda, right? So, like the Rwanda, like double hit set, right? Double hit set immunity. Or there's that weird, weird looking counter Rwanda, right? Oh no, no. Just put speed on her, man. I give her actually speed. Give her speed so that she can actually take turns in like S3. And even the small beer counts in the end of the day, right? Make it so that your Rwanda is just not to counter SSB only. Whether that she could actually a unit, right? Give her reasons to be picked more than just for SSB. Because you're gonna need to pick her just besides not just recipe for like cannons to fear to Tinibrio too, right? Sometimes you see double dual attacks like Cerise Rasp or something. It's pretty nice, man. Okay. Here's a weapon. Pretty nice. Helmet was insane, I'm pretty sure, yeah. It's just ER. 
Yeah. Oh yeah. I saw Eddie Mero, right? I I do pick her into Eddie Mero a lot. I think her gear is actually no. I took her some time of her better gear away. But yeah, as you say, they're not highly rolled or insane, right? But they're just gear with like synergetic subs. You see these flat subs a lot, right? You look at like yo Melon. Why is Melon running flat HP so much? Why is he so much flat HP everywhere? Right? Why is he like flat HP there, flat defense there and stuff? Like why is there so much flat HP, right? Because if you min max, there's no better stat line. Because the best stat line you could get is defense, speed, ER. What is gonna be your fourth one? HP or flat defense, right? So you're really min maxing to get the most out of your gear, right? What well, Rana's not gonna do anything with crit chance, effectiveness, crit damage, or attack, right? So you're just getting the most efficiency out of your gear. That's why I'm gemming in a lot of these flat stuff, right? Let's see. Let me see if I can find a gem with flat stuff. Okay, maybe not on this. One. I'm pretty sure I might stage Bell had one, right? Okay. I guess I don't have one. Okay, 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 okay. I guess awkward. Uh. Oh, right, guys, how we all here? Just in general, guys, you know what I'm talking about, right? You know what I'm talking about. It's probably showing on our next unit. Let's go to our next unit. Fallen Cecilia. Uh, we did our, we did our breakdown of Fallen Cecilia. Um, as again I said, it was it was a showcase, but it was not a showcase. It was supposed to be a breakdown. It's just my bad if I got that, guys. I'll definitely showcase her more in future. I'm definitely gonna do try to do more like RT videos. We'll, that'll be a future project, right? For now, we're just doing, we're doing with what um we have to do, right? Why on our to do list first? I can't reveal as one of them. So plus nine twenty nine or um plus twenty nine Aureus so that whenever the Aureus is used of blue arc uh blue cow the blue cow will be taking the shared damage not the FCC right. So blue cow will have plus thirty FCC out to plus twenty nine. Again again guys I'm min maxing as much as I can right. Plus twenty seven is probably the most efficient way to do it. But plus twenty plus twenty nine so I can get like the extra twenty HP or something right. I'm just really min maxing as much as possible right to really use the highest like if there's no other ways to get my units any better right look at this guys all these flat stuff when you say like you have a good gear right sometimes I ha you just have a lot of flat stuff too right look at this this boot is not insane but because it all works well together right all the subs work well together I use it there's no way in hell this is a good boot that you will prioritize even using people a lot of people are like yo just throw that boot away what is this what is this ugliness right there's people who could use it I'm using it on my farm Cecilia, one of my more dedicated units, right? Or one of my uh, more key units. Yeah, nothing too insane. Well, I do have a lot of imprints on her. We pulled a lot of uh, Fire Cecilias. Because we tried to get copies of Rise of Monarch, but we end up getting zero Rise of Monarchs. And like four, followers, four Fire Cecilias and like 400 bookmarks. Got lucky. Okay, next unit, Politis. So. <laughs> Politis, sorry, I changed this because I gave my Sage Battle the Abyssal, right? It just happened to be that way when I was trying to fight Pantry. But Politis is... I don't know, man. I don't like picking her. It feels so weird picking her, man. Politis is just there for counter cleave, right? You just have her built as a last pick or just a rare case scenario, right? But, yeah. Yeah, you guys are wondering. You guys are really wondering what, what's that blue neck, right? What is that blue neck, right? <laughs> Look at that, man. Not insane gear, but you just because I all have synergetic subs, right? 15 speed blue neck. And look, I flat, I jumped in a flat defense because I had no defense percent, right? But I wanted it to be as tanky as possible, so I put in a flat defense instead. Guys, there's reason to use these type of stuffs, and there's a purpose for everything, right? Yeah, my play is 240 speed. Try to make her as fast as possible to help cut, right? Because her S2 doesn't really push her entirely up. But you want to just be a bit faster to help cut faster units. Okay. Now, one of the hard units, well, just in general, one of the most hated units, Rural. So, Rural had an upgrade. Definitely had an upgrade. Just 22k defense, 1900-500 HP. 19k, sorry, 19k-500 HP. So, the Season 2 Rural was the one with high ER, 200 ER. Uh, the past the role you wanted to achieve was 2k defense, 20k HP, 200 speed, 200 DR, a insane stat line, quality stat line. But new, now with Frenzy 3, with the new Frenzy changes, you drop the ER role because you're going to get um, you're gonna get provoked anyways. So you bring Potion Vials instead of Hard Origin. 
You raise potion vial because once you get provoked, you get your turn, you just cleanse it off, right? Previously, before you resist everything, so you don't really need it, and you just bring water's origin just to make sure you're safe. But yep, we're out. One of those units you just have built, you don't need the most insane gear on her. She works no matter what, as a unit that just prolongs the game and just revives. Oh, this is the first time I ever uh, gemmed uh, in one of my immunity chests. So all my immunity chests I'll still have the crit chance, even on like my support units. But this is my only chance I ever put, really put in the effective resistance. I got lucky and got an 8% too. Yeah, look. Put in a flat defense here because there's no other thing that can really help me while well, right? Maybe HP percent, sorry, flat HP would be better. But yeah, so <laughs> yeah, so this was my my most insane boot. This was this, this was like my most insane boot. Uh, this was twenty six percent HP, eighteen percent defense. Sorry, twenty six percent defense, eighteen percent HP, eighteen percent ER, and like uh, I think another eighteen percent attack or nineteen percent attack. It was my best rolled gear almost, my highest like. Uh, stat line boot, but I changed the attack percent for flat defense, right? The attack percent is not gonna help me, man. The attack percent is not gonna help me. This is just me been maxing my gear as most as possible. Typical melon will gear. No, guys, this is just this is one of those units where you just have slightly better gear on, right? Like, there's purples here, there's just guys, you make do what you have, right? You spread your gear out really thin and wide, but some units just have better gear. I just all right. So Elena, Elena was just built because she was really good in the past previous seasons. I still have an I ninety her ring, but it's just whatever here. Yeah, it's just Elena's just there because you never know when I might need her. Some people might draft a lot of athletic all of a sudden, or they just might draft a lot of AOEs. And Elena is like the perfect answer to that, right? So still, I have her built. Still a nice unit. Still a force band in a lot of scenarios. But as you can see, there's not there's no imprints on any of these units, right? My rule has no imp oh my god! Imagine if I had imprint on rules. Oh my god, that's defense would be insane. But yeah, there's no imprint on most of these units, so I'm just here to just like no mold. Sorry, no moles either. No imprints, so it's just really oh god! I I mold the S one over the S two. <laughs> just in general, it could be a lot better, right? But it's just something that a lot of people who don't spend a lot or just free to play is really have to min max, right? They choose what their priorities are, so you can't really have the like everything. Yeah. Oh yeah, they showed a gear yet? Nothing too insane, right? Just just fast so that she can cut, and just as much HP defense as possible, and the ER is the extra, right? Thirty percent crit chance for some other reason. Okay. Anyway, DJ Basart. DJ Basart was never really used. He even has an eighty-five still. So something that I really enforce, something I see a lot is, I hate using a unit when they're not. I ninety, because you're just hurting yourself. You're just penalizing yourself. Like you could potentially make your unit better, but you're not right. Not because you don't have enough resources, but you're not farming it. Well, maybe not you're farming, it, or you just you can right. You can farm it. You can get the get the claws and materials to reforge, but you're just like eh, whatever, right? Yeah. So it's just you're not using your units to a maximum potential. Let's say that. I think that's the better word to say. Your unit could be used at a higher potential, but you're not using it at the best potential as possible. That's why I say when you mold your units, you mold your units, you're not using mold units, or not using I-90 units, you're really hurting yourself, right? This is general, my BJ Bazaar, yeah guys, there's units that use with 250 ER, and there's units you use with 150 ER, right? This unit is for 150 ER. For units that have lower effectiveness, like GP, John Purgis, or Bicera, right? So this is like a Bicera counter. Bicera don't have... 200 effectiveness, and there's no reason to have to even resist the Bicera, right? Because Bicera doesn't lock you, she doesn't lock you down. All you gotta do is cleanse it, right? So you still get your turn, you still cleanse off the unbuffable, even if they lands right? You don't need an insane ER, but you just need some. So I have a bunch of soul weirds for different scenarios, right? You see that, you have my Rural, my Momo, my Destino, all for different builds. Okay, we're reaching near the end now. Ray? Ray is in the same stat line as DJ Bissar. Wait, did I show DJ Bissar's gear? Oh, I don't think I, I don't think it's either that important either. This gear is just whatever gear. You could pause and uh, take a look at each Pierce. Yeah, so let's go to Ray. Ray is same spot in uh, DJ Bissar. He is just whatever gear, right? I may never draft him. I may draft him for once, maybe twice, maybe never. 
But yeah, same spot. Uh, he's pretty good into Fairy Tales Nabria, but I have my Destino for that, right? He uses a filler soul weaver just for emergency scenarios or a case where I need to bring something for a special reason. As I say this, right, I like just to have units geared so that whenever there is a time I need to draft something special, like unique, like, oh, I need to draft the Caesar out for some odd reason. I need to draft a Koli for some reason here. I just can't, right, because I have them geared. That's why I kind of like to have all my units geared. Okay. The end is not either. I don't think the end is ready. Uh, let's ignore my end, guys. Okay, that seems to be it, guys. That's my unit showcase. So guys, that's been my showcase. If you have any questions or like any comments or anything you want to really know why I further me to expand on, you have to always just check me on Discord or check me at uh, this, uh, Reddit. Not really Reddit, I guess, but Discord and Twitch. I'm always there. I'm always around there. You guys always give me a ping or a message and I always reply. You guys though, I'm always here to help. I'm always just trying to... I'm here for the community more than for my, for my sake, right? Anyways guys, it's been fun. It's been enjoyable. Hope you guys enjoyed the Malona's account review because it's something that something I've been hiding for a while let's say and it's gonna be exposed so guys good luck on your RT matches I hope this was insightful helpful have a good day if you like the video subscribe like and I'll see you guys later